Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on introduction to turbulence in fluid flow. So, uh, we had the uh, discussion about the governing equations uh, for fluid flow and uh, when we talk about fluid flow then in that case uh, uh, the flow may be laminar or may be turbulent and uh, we need to know uh, you know things about turbulence because uh, most of the flows uh, which we will deal they will be of the turbulent nature. So, what are the essential terminologies and what turbulence means, what needs to be modeled while we uh, are solving for the uh, you know uh, fluid flow problems uh, in, in these uh, tundis or in any vessel where the flow is turbulent. So, we will have some introduction about these terms and we will know more about these uh, turbulent flows uh, modeling and, and the associated terms uh, you know in our coming lectures. So, as you know that uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the flow then uh, we uh, basically uh, decide by the Reynolds number whether the uh, flow is laminar or turbulent. So, if the uh, Reynolds number value, so that will be uh, less in that case uh, it will be uh, laminar and if it is more, so uh, at low Reynolds number flow will be uh, laminar and at high Reynolds number flow is observed to be uh, you know uh, turbulent. So, uh, your uh, uh, Reynolds number for that the expression will be uh, R e equal to u l upon eta. So, you will have these uh, characteristic velocity, characteristic length and then the kinematic viscosity of the fluid in the denominator. So, that way uh, you get these uh, value of the uh, Reynolds number and then uh, uh, you uh, differentiate whether the flow is uh, laminar or the turbulent. So, certainly there will be also a situation when there will be transition from laminar to turbulence. So, that will be uh, you know uh, another thing uh, which will be there. Now, uh, Reynolds number of flow uh, gives a measure of relative importance of inertia forces and viscous forces. So, uh, you know as we know that Reynolds number is uh, inertia force upon viscous force. So, if it is uh, of uh, smaller uh, uh, value it means viscous uh, forces are more dominant and if the Reynolds number is very very high it means inertia forces are dominating. So, uh, so that way you know uh, whenever uh, you will have uh, those regions. So, uh, depending upon the Reynolds number we can say that which kind of uh, forces are uh, you know dominating which is more you know uh, prominent. Now, uh, what happens that uh, when uh, we talk about the turbulence, so basically you will have fluctuations. Now, the difference between the uh, laminar and turbulence is that uh, in case of turbulence uh, you know, what is uh, happening that those uh, length scales become quite uh, large over which the mixing takes place. There will be fluctuations in the uh, variable values like uh, velocity, pressure or so. So, they will be fluctuating over the mean values. So, in fact, the fluctuation in the velocities will give rise to another additional stress uh, which we have seen that certainly that in earlier uh, lectures we have seen that you have stress terms and they are uh, expressed in terms of uh, you know velocity gradient term and all that. Now, in this case uh, your uh, fluctuation terms which uh, you are uh, encountering because of the turbulence. Now, they lead to extra or additional stress terms. So, they are known as Reynolds stress terms. So, they need to be modeled, they need to be uh, 
uh, taken into account. So, so these things are important when we uh, talk about the uh, Reynolds number of flow and as you see that uh, you will have uh, depending upon the uh, number you see that which force is important. Now, you know that you have a critical Reynolds number. So, before be below that it is uh, laminar and, and above that it is uh, uh, you know uh, turbulent. So, uh, when the value of the critical Reynolds number I mean uh, uh, value of the Reynolds number is below the critical Reynolds number then the flow is laminar and in that you have the adjacent uh, you know the flow is smooth and adjacent layers of fluid slide past each other. So, that is what the uh, traits of the laminar flow is that uh, your uh, flow will be smooth and uh, your uh, adjacent layers will be uh, sliding one above other. So, they will not be mixing you know across you know in the cross devised manner. So, they will be going and then there will may be some diffusion of the atoms will be taking place from the bottom layer to the top layer or top layer to the bottom layer like that. So, that is what is happening in the case of the laminar flow. And in that case if your applied boundary conditions are not changing with the time then we call it the flow is steady and the regime will be the uh, laminar flow. Now, uh, there is another regime uh, uh, that is your turbulent regime and that is uh, 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 that you are encountering when you see that the uh, Reynolds number value is going uh, uh, you know beyond a certain value that is critical value. And in that uh, basically there will be complicated series of events will be uh, taking place. So, uh, you that I mean uh, there will be radical change of uh, the flow. So, you will have a lot of uh, you know events taking place in uh, uh, that and uh, uh, basically what happens that finally, the, the behavior of the fluid uh, that becomes random and chaotic in this it is a, in a um, in a, in a very uh, defined manner the flow is uh, flowing one above other flow is there. But in that case it becomes very uh, chaotic as well as random there will be mixing there will be eddies smaller eddies will be there larger eddies will be there. So, all the uh, diffusion which is taking place they will be at higher scales. So, because uh, the there may be uh, you know diffusion or, or the mixing over the larger you know uh, bulk. So, maybe if you have 1, 2, 3 or 4 and 5 layers. So, maybe 1 and 5 layer uh, may mix uh, because of these uh, turbulence. So, uh, that is the uh, basic uh, difference. So, your uh, uh, behavior that that is what it uh, there are radical changes in the flow character you your uh, flow becomes uh, random and uh, chaotic and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, that regime which you get that is known as the uh, you know turbulent flow. So, uh, if you uh, try to see the uh, you know uh, the velocity measurement in case of a uh, turbulent flow then uh, the velocity measurement basically will be uh, like uh, you will have uh, the time here and if your uh, velocity is here. So, what happens that uh, your uh, uh, flow will be so suppose uh, this is u. So, your uh, actual flow will be like it will be going like this. So, it will be going it will be fluctuating. Uh, so, in normal case you can assume it to be uh, you know fluctuating over uh, a certain mean value. So, that is uh, so, you will have a steady state mean value that is u. So, you will your uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, value that is uh, will be uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, uh, turbulent flow you will have a mean value and you have the uh, fluctuating component. So, basically at any time u t will be uh, u. So, that will be your uh, mean component and then you will have a fluctuating component. So, that is u prime t. So, that way the, the turbulence uh, you know in, in case of turbulence 
the uh, flow is basically characterized and uh, uh, you will have uh, this for all the properties like uh, either be it u or be it v or w or p. So, for all that you will have a mean value and a fluctuating component this uh, component basically uh, that uh, component is this component of the mean that is the fluctuating component that is u prime t. So, that way uh, your uh, uh, so you will have many statistical uh, descriptors will be used uh, while uh, we try to uh, know more about the uh, you know uh, the turbulent flow. Now, uh, while uh, in, in normal case uh, when your uh, uh, you will you, you will have two space dimensions for the velocity of pressure. Now, uh, turbulent uh, fluctuations when there are they will have the uh, three dimensional uh, character. So, that is the uh, trait about the uh, turbulence. Now, in this case what happens that you have the presence of uh, eddies and uh, if you look at the uh, you know turbulent uh, flow. So, in that uh, flow structures you will have the presence of uh, eddies. So, these eddies may be of uh, you know smaller dimension or the uh, larger dimension and uh, they can be uh, often of size. So, they can may be of a smaller size intermediate size or even the larger size uh, may be uh, to the extent of the, uh, the length of the vessel or so. So, that way uh, you will have uh, uh, the uh, presence of eddies and in that uh, because of these eddies uh, you know the point which are largely separated in the uh, vessel they also come in uh, intimate contact because of uh, the, the flow structures in the case of uh, uh, turbulent flow and there will be very high value of uh, diffusive uh, transfer. Uh, I think transfer of mass, heat or momentum in the case of uh, uh, turbulence. So, that is the uh, basically uh, trait about uh, the uh, turbulent flow. So, you will have uh, uh, the, uh, the production of or the uh, genesis of very high value of uh, uh, the coefficient of uh, uh, diffusion when we talk about the uh, turbulent flows. Now, the thing is that uh, in this case uh, you have the uh, characteristic velocity and the uh, characteristic length and uh, um, they have of the larger eddies are basically uh, uh, same of, of the for the larger eddies suppose the characteristic length that is uh, L will be same as the uh, you know length scale L of the mean flow. So, similarly the velocity also characteristic velocity for the larger eddies will be uh, same as that of the uh, mean flow velocity u. So, that is uh, normally there in the case of uh, the uh, turbulent uh, you know uh, flows. Now, when we talk about uh, the uh, other scales or other uh, uh, properties suppose uh, if you go for uh, uh, those when the turbulence is very small suppose uh, uh, turbulent uh, if you talk about the Reynolds number. Now, in the Reynolds number you have the uh, ratio that is uh, uh, inertia force by viscous force. Uh, so, uh, when your inertia force and viscous force will be uh, somewhat nearly equal in that case Reynolds number is close to 1. So, that um, uh, tells that your viscous force is uh, quite high. So, it is uh, uh, something that that is why it is uh, uh, close to about uh, 1. Otherwise, when you go in the upstream, so that is your uh, uh, depending upon. So, if you take uh, suppose uh, the u l upon eta if the u is 1 meter per second l is 1 meter and your eta in normal case becomes 10 raise to power minus 6 or so. So, that in that also you see that the uh, value of the Reynolds number becomes 10 raise to the power 6. So, that is how you know the, the uh, so that will be inertia dominated kind of uh, uh, flow. So, we will come to uh, this uh, uh, further uh, if you try to know about the uh, turbulence. So, uh, you will have uh, the uh, transition to uh, turbulence and uh, uh, in the case of uh, different kind of flows uh, you will have a null number which will say that uh, here the uh, transition takes place and uh, you know in the case of pipe flow transition 
you will have the category of flow without inflection point. So, basically there are uh, uh, two cases there may be uh, the presence of inflection point when you have the uh, transition to turbulence or you may have uh, the case without uh, the uh, you know the uh, presence of these inflection points. So, that way uh, you will have uh, uh, so that um, uh, depends upon the different situations. Now, uh, the viscous theory of hydrodynamic stability predicts that these flows are un unconditionally stable to infinitesimally disturb uh, to disturbances at all Reynolds number in case of pipe flow. And in the case of pipe flow, the transition to turbulence will be taking place between Reynolds number uh, 2000 and uh, 1 lakh. So, basically normally what we we might have uh, studied about uh, the uh, the uh, transitions in case of the uh, these uh, you know pipe flows. Before that, when we were uh, uh, talking about uh, the uh, turbulence, so in that uh, uh, we talked about the smaller eddies and the uh, larger eddies, and uh, the uh, you know uh, the larger eddies basically they will be uh, dominated by the inertia effects and uh, the viscous effects are negligible in that case. So, uh, you know, uh, so normally these larger eddies which are uh, there, so these are uh, basically uh, inviscid or effectively inviscid. So, uh, basically if you look at uh, the values u l upon eta, so in that case if you take uh, uh, u and l and uh, what we saw. So, if you are taking that length uh, as a characteristic length and you are taking larger eddies into account in that case though the Reynolds number becomes very high. So, inertia force is dominating. So, in that case your uh, uh, the flow is in viscid viscous forces are uh, negligible they are, their effect is negligible. So, that is why we take it as uh, the inviscid. Now, uh, uh, in, in those cases your uh, uh, angular momentum is conserved and uh, that is why that leads to uh, you know uh, I mean uh, during that uh, vortex stretching this uh, angular momentum is uh, uh, said to be uh, conserved. So, that will uh, you know uh, lead to the rotation rate to further uh, you know increase and the uh, you know uh, radius of the cross section will uh, decrease. So, that way uh, you will have that kind of flow structure which will be uh, you know coming up in the case of the uh, turbulence and uh, you know you will have the, uh, the uh, and also what happens that uh, you will have the uh, mean flow, you will have the larger eddies, you will have a smaller eddies. So, they will be deriving the energy from the mean flow. So, that way and uh, also the uh, turbulence is said to be uh, self uh, dissipating also. So, those uh, uh, terms we will be uh, discussing you know uh, later. Now, uh, coming to the uh, you know uh, the uh, turbulence uh, and, and the uh, transition to the uh, turbulence if you look at. So, this we discussed that for the uh, pipe flow uh, that was uh, uh, the case where uh, uh, and, and, and for different kind of uh, uh, flows you will have the uh, uh, in different way uh, you will have the uh, you know uh, transition taking place as we were discussing that uh, when we talk about the uh, you know uh, uh, velocity profile where that will be susceptible to uh, the uh, different kind of uh, flows uh, and, and will be creating the instability. So, the, inf uh, the inflection point which we are discussing that uh, you will have uh, you know when we, you may have the uh, you know instability uh, and the velocity profiles may be like if your velocity profile goes like this. So, basically this is the point of inflection. So, uh, and this is your y and this is your you know, velocity. Similarly, uh, you know when uh, you, you have uh, the you can have the uh, uh, transition of the turbulence also uh, transition to turbulence uh, even uh, without the inflection point. So, your, uh, your, your situation may go like this. So, that may be in this case uh, you know you have uh, this is your inviscid instability. So, in, in that case uh, 
uh, you know viscous effects are negligible and this is your uh, viscous instability. So, this is uh, basically the uh, you know velocity profile which you see. So, this is uh, with the, uh, the presence of inflection point and this is without the presence of uh, the inflection point. So, that is what is uh, uh, normally happening when we have uh, the uh, transitions to turbulence uh, you know taking place. Now, that is uh, basically uh, for the different uh, you know uh, there may be different uh, kind of flows you have jet flow. Uh, you have also the uh, so in that jet flow and then you have uh, the mixing uh, or you have the uh, you know uh, many cases uh, so uh, mixing or flow behind the wake and all that so in all those cases you will have uh, uh, you 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 must uh, um, have the idea about how you know the turbulence uh, is uh, takes place how there is uh, you know how suppose in jet so it will be moving so, a moving fluid and that will be interacting with the stationary fluid which is there. So, accordingly you will have a deformation and all that. So, this needs to be you know we expect that you have some understanding of these phenomena and that will help you basically in understanding basically the terminologies which will be coming later related to the turbulence. Now, coming to uh, some uh, uh, descriptors of the uh, uh, turbulent flow. So, when we uh, as we discussed that in the case of turbulent flow, uh, you have a mean component and one is your uh, fluctuating component. So, uh, you know so what we do is normally uh, the mean phi of the uh, flow property. Uh, so, you will have the uh, flow property phi and this will be defined as the, the mean phi plus phi prime t. So, that way uh, we define. So, basically uh, for the uh, for the turbulent uh, flow you know for any property uh, for turbulent flow when we uh, talk about any uh, property phi at time t. So, this phi at uh, you know uh, time t. So, that will be uh, defined as the mean value. So, that is uh, phi uh, so I, and plus uh, you will have uh, the fluctuating component uh, you know, phi dash uh, phi prime t. So, that way uh, your uh, uh, this is how the, uh, the property will be there in the case of the uh, turbulent flow. Now, the thing is that uh, for as far as this fluctuating part is there. So, uh, you know for this uh, the uh, if you take the time varying component and if you take uh, uh, its uh, value. So, the so uh, basically its uh, time mean uh, will be uh, 0 for the fluctuating component. So, uh, so, uh, so you will have uh, the other uh, uh, there are different ways to express this and one is the uh, time average or mean. So, for any property um, you know phi uh, the uh, mean phi that uh, mean will be uh, uh, denoted as. So, uh, that will be basically uh, so that is uh, shown here. So, your uh, uh, this mean of the flow property uh, uh, is uh, defined as uh, uh, we are taking 1 by uh, delta t and 0 to delta t you have uh, uh, phi t uh, delta t. So, that way uh, we define the mean of the uh, flow property and uh, then you have the uh, you know fluctuating uh, component also. So, uh, you may you uh, you know uh, we should take that limit uh, towards the uh, infinity you know, uh, but uh, then you will have uh, uh, but you will have to take the delta t uh, you know uh, uh, cautiously because uh, uh, you have certainly a size of the uh, there is a limitation on the that limitation is put by the size of the eddies. So, uh, that uh, you know uh, slowest variation will be because of the largest eddies. So, accordingly you will have to take the uh, delta t. Now, if you take the uh, time average value of the uh, fluctuations. So, by definition 
the uh, time average value of the uh, uh, fluctuation will be uh, taken as 0. So, if you the fluctuation which we had seen in the you know, first case that you have the mean value and then fluctuation taking place. So, basically it is assumed that the uh, if you take the time average of this uh, value it will be coming to 0. So, that is why you have a mean value and then you have the uh, time average uh, uh, value. So, we write uh, normally when we do not take the t into uh, every time uh, for the notation. So, you will be writing 5 equal to mean 5 plus uh, 5 prime. So, that way uh, we are uh, writing you know uh, these uh, values. Now, uh, apart from that uh, you know uh, you have uh, other properties. So, other properties uh, uh, will be your uh, uh, now this uh, fluctuation component of the uh, suppose velocity we are uh, uh, taking into account. So, this uh, fluctuation component will also be uh, leading to the uh, energy also. So, the total kinetic energy that so these fluctuating parts which will that uh, give rise to the kinetic energy they are the turbulent kinetic energy known as. So, you will have the uh, turbulent kinetic energy So, uh, this turbulent kinetic energy uh, you know per unit mass So, this will be by the respective uh, velocity fluctuations and uh, uh, that will be uh, equal to half of uh, u prime square plus uh, v prime square and plus. Uh, uh, so, you will have a square and then um, and then w prime square. So, that way this uh, term because of the this fluctuation part which you which is squared. So, that gives you basically the um, turbulent kinetic energy uh, you know per unit mass and this is uh, basically to be, to be taken into account and when we deal with the turbulent flows uh, modeling in that case this will be uh, used. Similarly, you have uh, based on this you uh, define the turbulence intensity. So, that is basically uh, you know defined and turbulence intensity uh, will be the the average you know uh, RMS. So, it will be depending upon the uh, you know RMS velocity. Now, uh, before that uh, we need to know what is the um, you know variance and RMS. So, you know, first of all the we are talking about the uh, variance. So, uh, the variance uh, it will be uh, will be defined as 1 by delta t and phi square phi prime square dt. So, so that is how the variance is calculated. So, you will have the fluctuation part it is a square and then we are dividing by uh, delta t if you are integrating over delta t. So, this way we are getting the variance and the RMS value of uh, this uh, fluctuating uh, part. So, that uh, phi RMS that will be uh, the, the uh, square root of this. So, this is your uh, you know uh, square root and basically uh, what happens that uh, before that uh, we need to understand that the u prime square or v prime square or w prime square uh, bar on, on, on all these uh, components. So, uh, they give rise to the some of the uh, you know stress terms. So, uh, you know uh, so that is why uh, uh, and, and uh, these are uh, and these stresses which are because of these uh, fluctuation components. So, we call it as Reynolds stresses that is what we uh, discussed. And uh, then uh, we defined this uh, turbulent kinetic energy. So, that will be k equal to half of u prime square plus v prime square plus w prime square. And the turbulence intensity that is the uh, average RMS velocity uh, divided by the uh, reference mean flow. So, this will be uh, you know average RMS velocity divided by reference mean flow. So, uh, mean flow velocity. So, if you take reference mean flow velocity as u reference. So, uh, what you do is the you can uh, uh, derive it uh, through this uh, k. So, so that will be 2 by 3 of uh, this k. So, so t i will be uh, 2 by 3 k and uh, it is half because uh, 
you will have a 1 velocity component. So, you will have 3 by 2. So, 2 by 3 you multiply and so it will be velocity component that is your RMS velocity and then it will be divided by the U reference. So, this way uh, you define uh, these uh, you know turbulence intensity and this will be one of the you know parameters which will be used when we are going to give the boundary conditions in the case of the flow where the turbulence will be uh, used. Apart from that you have even the uh, terms like uh, the uh, moment of the uh, these uh, different fluctuating variables. So, uh, that will lead to the terms like u prime v prime uh, bar or uh, v prime w prime bar that leads to these uh, you know stresses. So, so that uh, those terms uh, there will be uh, the additional shear stresses uh, they will be coming up uh, you know uh, when we uh, deal with turbulence. So, when uh, we go to uh, deal with uh, the Navier-Stokes uh, for that Reynolds averaging, uh, Reynolds averaging Navier-Stokes equations where we take this uh, turbulence flow into account in that case we will see that these uh, terms will also come into picture that will be the extra Reynolds that is shear stress that will be uh, you know uh, coming up. So, uh, so accordingly uh, you know these terms uh, uh, need to be understood and that uh, we will uh, see uh, you know more of these uh, uh, terminologies in our uh, you know uh, coming lectures. Thank you very much. Music